Yo Internet, welcome back. Wrapping up a few of the little things in order to fire this Coyote Swap S187 for the first time. Got the low side of the AC figured out like I promised I was going to show you in the last video. Did a few things on the transmission harness and ended up not having to do a thing that I thought I had to do. We'll cover that later. Uh, tested the fuel pressure, make sure it's regulated at the correct PSI, but we're cruising, so let's get you caught up. start things off I got the trans harness kind of rode where I want to there's a lot of extra being the rear O2 sensors um, but I kind of draped the majority of the harness over the transmission so that the O2 sensor wires are up there and not dragging on the ground or anything so what I want to talk about now is the reverse switch and the vehicle speed which is, I lost it. <laughs> anyway, good. Reverse light switch and speed sensor are right there. Yeah, along with another rear O2 harness. So I've already labeled these, this just, it's gonna come up short. As you can see up there is our speed sensor. Just gotta extend the wires and you notice it's two wires. I looked at the wire diagram for the 5.4 because this is the, actually the GT500 transmission harness, which has been working out great. And now even better because now I don't have to swap out this plug from three valve engine harness. I can just extend it, plug it in, fix it in the tune, or maybe even one has a fix for that, like to have the output, output speed sensor in the computer accept this type of sensor that's not powered. And then reverse light, like I said, switch is going there, just gotta extend that as well. There is one caveat to this though. For whatever reason, they decided to have the output speed shaft wire M36 on the 5.4, which is where ours is. And it is actually pin 14 in the 5.0. So I gotta switch that around on the car, which is already in there. Luckily, it's in the the top. So, literally, this is our trans harness. I just gotta take it apart and switch some pins around. Unfortunately, I got on tape it, which I really, uh, at least it's just one pin. I wanted to keep the trans, or at least the engine harness is gonna be intact from like it is from the factory, but trans harness, not so much. So that brings me to the air conditioning solution. Um, came to my attention that you can change the pressure switches without discharging the system because there's a Schrader valve in the line. Sweet. So the 4.6 uses a dual pressure switch, which is four wires. The V6 and the Coyote, even the 4.0 V6 uses a transducer switch like this. And <clears throat> the Switch in the 4.6 is like either on or off. You either get ground or power, whichever way, it's either on or off. Uh, this switch actually gets it five volts from the computer and then gives uh, some sort of pressure uh, reading, whether it's, it's probably zero to five volts back to the computer. So I opted to get that to make our high speed side just like the Coyote. It's gonna work just like the Coyote, but I'm gonna get more into what I'm gonna do with the low side in a bit here. So onto the AC stuff, got the Coyote transducer switch, and I'm gonna swap the, the 4.6 dual pressure switch out for it. And I'm told there's a Schrader valve in here so that you know, the refrigerant escapes when we change this. It's kind of convenient. Hmm. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, oops. Weapon's free. So here's the pigtail repair harness and I got it labeled on which needs to go where. So we're gonna get the five volt reference there. I'm just gonna hook up the tan and red wire that I've already ran and then our signal ground, which is gonna go to an existing wire I'm gonna have to splice 
back into that I've already made. So I did have to revamp the uh, ground circuit for the AC pressure switch because the 4.6 switch was a 12 volt switch and the transducer is actually kind of like a sensor deal where the ground needs to come from the computer 5 volt system. So had to kind of undo the, the ground feed from here and now I'm going to have to get to my common sensor ground that I already hooked up to the computer and uh, kind of tee into that and that'll be good to go for the AC side. All right, so I got both the MAF and the AC harness all loomed up and radiator cover back on. Everything's loomed and taped up until a little rat's nest here you got yet, but it's, trust me, it is organized. Shrunk to the ground that we had in, ended up not using for the AC switch. And I'm at the point now where I need a drive shaft, do the exhaust, and load a tune in this thing. So while I'm waiting for drive shaft and base tune, uh, well, speaking of base tune, I gotta pull the VIN from this uh, computer because I don't know what it is. Now this is my device for the Fox actually, but it should be able to pull the vehicle's info uh, and the strategy so that I can get a base tune from Lund and get that ordered and coming. Cause we're that close. And not to mention, see if this thing communicates. I uh, probably not be able to see it, but I do have a VIN. So I'll be able to get that to them. And I think the next button will show me my, the strategy. All right, cool. I was able to pull the VIN strategy and the part number. I'm just gonna verify the sticker that Power by the Hour put on the PCM, make sure that all matches and make sure my VIN is actually different than the car, just in case I was pulling it from uh, that's a different module, but I don't think that's how it works in these older cars. And I kind of want to turn the key back on just to see if I get the, you know, some information as far as like cool and temp and other sensors, throttle position, stupid stuff like that, just to see if what we did um, is all jiving. I'm not sure, maybe we'll see this, but it uh, shows like the degrees of cool and temp and throttle and I move the throttle and all the voltages move, so pretty cool. Some more on the AC low side. I've been chasing my tail in the book and in real life. I uh, so I don't know if it's a discrepancy, like if this was like an early 07 manual or what, because there were some discrepancies in here. <sighs> I have this labeled as the AC low pressure switch. And the only color in the book is as far as that being green and orange or light brown or whatever you want to call it is in the inline connector coming from the low side switch which correlates with it because the low side switch does go through an inline in here but according to the map here it's dark blue and yellow and it's still dark blue and yellow so this came from the inline so i'm like well low side switches are here on your 4.6. So I unsheathed that wire, tested for continuity, and that's the same wire as over there. Great. So what I wanna do is essentially take the this switch and use it as sort of a, in series to the AC request. So right now how this works is this gets 12 volts until there's too much pressure or vice versa. As you can see it's connected out. I don't know what state that switch is or what they default to in the book. But so now I gotta find where the other switch goes. That does correlate the violet and orange in real life. As you can see that is violet and orange but it's going to the smart junction box. So I'm either gonna have to just make a harness and route this to the AC request line. And I say or, but I don't really know if there's much more of an option. So I'm gonna ponder this over some more. So just to feed my curiosity, I hooked up the ground and with just the ignition on this AC switch coming from there, does get 12 volts. So I'm guessing until it overpressures a little side, that's when it disconnects 12 volts and gets to the computer to tell it to 
shut the AC clutch off. So it's kind of irrelevant for what we're gonna do. Um, so I think the best way to do this is to make my own harness and have it come all the way over and put it in line with the AC clutch request so that it'll interrupt that circuit when that is too much pressure. So this is the best way I can think of doing it besides fishing out the, the wires because that other, that purple wire is in a smart junction box in the passenger footwell. And I guess I could look at wire diagrams, but I think that's gonna be the best way. So after some humming and hawing, I really wanted to use the existing engine inline because I had two wires not being used, but I don't have the pins, the mail pins to add to this connector, which have been really convenient because then I could have just set the wires there, made a nice little loom coming along here and go to the inline and then go in here and then go to where it needs to, all nice and neat. So I'm just gonna try and find a two pin connector, salvage that for somewhere and do the same thing and just keep it tight to, you know, along there so I know where it's at and it looks somewhat clean factory. All right, so I found this super convenient, you know, four pin connector in the three valve engine harness. It's got enough wires on the engine side. I'm pretty sure to reach the sensor, come all around, connect at the inline or convenient spot. I think the inline will be the best spot so that you can disconnect the engine if you, uh, engine harness if you need to. And then off on the other side to get to the PCM connections. Or not the PCM, but yeah, PCM connections. So again, save that three valve engine harness for little stuff like this. And just hoping to have just two wires on one side. I was trying to find another connector that had just two, but I'm not sure where that even went. <laughs> Probably somewhere in the trans area, but super convenient. So now I'll be able to hook up the low AC pressure side to interrupt the AC request signal. All right, so I got the <clears throat> low pressure harness deleted there, taped nice, hooked up to the sensor, made my own wire loom. You can't even tell which one it is, can you? Because it's hidden. Nah, it's this one right here, going back around. You know, very factory looking, and I even found a spot to clip it into down there. That's the connector down there. We'll clip in and then the wires I tied it into are the AC request signal from the PCM. So what this wire is doing, the PCM is grounding this wire out to ground the AC clutch relay. So it's in series. The switch is uh, normally closed. So that's what we want. So when it sees too high a pressure on the low side, it'll open up and disengage the pressure or the clutch for the AC. So that wraps up basically all the underhood wiring here. There is a few outliers, as I said in my previous video. Uh, there is one more, this EVAP purge valve, which usually hangs out in the manifold, hangs out over there in the shock tower in the 4.6. The connector for that is right there. Not gonna worry about that. <laughs> so besides the reverse lights, which need to, you need to wire in your own relay, I'm gonna worry about that down the road, but now I put my order in for Lund into Tune and gotta fill in my fluids, check the trans fluid, oil, all that good stuff. And I can fire this thing over. So once I put fluids in, I might crank it over, um, but now I'm gonna check out the fuel pressure. All right, so got a pressure test kit, teed in here in the line. Much to my surprise, this line had a lot of pressure in from when I was cycling the key before. I thought it wouldn't because when I was cycling the key, after the car was sitting for a while, the fuel pump made noise like as if it was air in the line. Much to my surprise, got a handful of fuel. But as you can see, uh, that's just after a few seconds of cycling. Let me cycle that. Now the AM radio is gonna go nuts here. See it kind of bounce towards 60. Shut it off. Hit the click, it's ready to go again. The filter is keeping it at about 58. So once the car is running, I'll have to monitor this to see if I have to completely ground out the fuel pump module to keep the pump always running or what. But it's a good sign there. 
So that should wrap it up for today's episode. We still got a few little things yet to do to get this thing fired up for the first time. Got the HP Tuners RTD Plus from Lone Racing. Sent them off my stock file so they can write me a base tune and I'll go over all the data logging and reading and writing of the tune process for you guys. Uh, I still got to make an exhaust mid pipe to match up uh, Kyrie headers to the early S197 cat back and do the gears probably do the gears in a separate episode but on the next episode this will be firing up for its very first time in this car so i cannot wait so please like the video and please consider subscribing we'll see you next time wrap it up for this tip ah, man.